Oi, boys, welcome, welcome, welcome to another video on the channel. Fresh off the heels of Origin 2, the New South Wales Blues, led by their captains James Tedesco and Nathan Cleary, quite comfortably dispose of the Queensland Maroons in Game 2 of the Origin, defeating them 32 points to 10. Alright, so where do we start? Cam Munster, around two minutes into the match, leaves the field for an HIA test, which he does end up failing and we don't see him for the rest of the match, so a huge loss to start the match for the Queenslanders. Now as for the actual knock that he took, I thought it was worth a penalty because he did catch the ball on the full, which you were then entitled to run for the quick tap, but he was pulled down to the ground, which pretty much generated the necessary force to concuss him, and I believe it was Tyson Frizzell who was at fault there. But yeah, I thought at the very least a penalty should have been rewarded to Queensland, but that wasn't the case. I wonder if anyone would bring it up post-game, but yeah, moving along here, that was a huge loss for Queensland, like I said. Munster gone for essentially the whole game, and Ben Hunt is left to fill in. So around the 7 minute mark, the Maroons decide to run it on the last play. DCE with the cutout ball, out to Dane Gagai, gets around Whiten, draws in Tupo, and frees just enough space for Xavier Coates to dive into the corner, and what a try that was. 17 minutes in, on the back of a Nathan Cleary line break, the Blues go wide, and the star for the Maroons last week, Kurt Capewell, races up to try and shut the play down. Cody Walker then does a little spin move to beat Capewell and crosses for the Blues' first try of the match. It was a nice heads up play from Cody Walker. If Capewell made the tackle, it would have been a good play, but he didn't. Him racing up forces a 50 50 play in a situation where it wasn't really needed, and Queensland get punished for it. Not long after that, 22 minutes in, James Tedesco, he just, uh, he just beats, he beats Ben Hunt, a little show and go, steps back on the inside, and he scores a fairly easy try for the New South Wales Blues, and are uh, both of their tries coming on what would have been Cameron Munster's side if he were still on the field. So not long till half time, about 37 minutes in, Xavier Coates makes an error, the Blues get the scrum, and... <laughs> um, Andrew Johns kept talking about it, they did it twice, uh, on the scrums, Queensland would defend against four players with three players, and on this first occasion, Josh Adokar puts both Philip Sami and Ben Hunt on skates as he slides in for the Blues' third try of the game. So at halftime, the Blues head into the sheds with the lead 18 points to four. Uh, a couple of errors, I think a penalty as well, inside the Maroons' only half of the field really killed them. I haven't checked the stats, but I'm pretty sure territory would be substantially in the Blues' favour for the first half. The penalties don't help, the error in their own half of the field, I'm pretty sure, also didn't help matters, and that's on the back of some solid defence by Jake Chaboyevich and some solid running by Junior Polo and the rest of their forwards, but Polo in particular had a hectic game coming off the bench. Uh, that was one of my biggest worries in the preview video. It was then the New South Wales bench I thought on paper looked like they had the more potent bench and that was the case. Paolo, the players on debut, Isaiah Yo, Nathan Brown and Dale Finucane, they all played excellent. From the simple hard hitting runs by Junior Paolo, Nathan Brown, Dale Finucane and the late footwork at the line by Isaiah Yo and even from Junior Paolo at some stages. Yeah, they just are, uh, they were just beasts coming off the bench. Alright, so two minutes after half time, 42 minutes into the match, Damien Cook goes for a little snipe, almost gets Nathan Cleary away through the middle of the field. But on the back of that run, the Blues score another fairly soft try. And judging by that uh, that effort in defense, if you're a Queensland fan, you, you pretty much knew as well as I did that the game was over from that point on. They were numbered up, but Jack Whiten just got the better of Dane Gagai on that occasion. And Gagai ends up falling off his tackle. Whiten crosses, and yeah, as far as scores go between the two centers, it's one Jack Whiten and one Dane Gagai, and I gotta say, I'm enjoying this little rivalry between the two. Around 51 minutes in, 51, 52, give or take, the Blues get the feed to a scrum on the Queensland 20, and again, it's the same positioning, three Queenslanders up against four Blues, and they soak up the numbers and get it out to Tupo, who will cross untouched for the Blues' second try in the second half. So who's to blame there? I think it's weird that they didn't adjust after that first try off the scrum. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a strange one from the Queenslanders. 56 minutes in, both teams get into a huge game of one, two, three grabs. Everyone just grabbing, pushing, shoving. A couple of uh, jersey punches from Payne Haas. I think Tino tried to tried to swing back, but there was just too many players grabbing, <laughs> and uh, yeah, no no real action. It results in Payne Haas and Tino Fatsuo Malayalbi getting sent for 10, but yeah, nothing major, no real punches thrown, but it was uh, it was exciting in the moment. So 62 minutes into the match, Queensland 
Inside the Blues 10, they go to Cherry Evans, they show shape out the back, but Cherry Evans sends it flat to Papali'i, one on one with Damien Cook, Papali'i disposes of him, and he crosses for the Maroons second try of the game. It was great play by uh, DCE and Papali, but unfortunately that was the only, <laughs> the only good play from DCE. So 64 minutes in, the Blues shift it wide, and on the back of a Cody Walker kick, uh, Philip Sami, he does a sloppy job trying to clean up the grubber kick, and uh, it sits up for Ed Car. he scores the final try of the game. Now in between all this, uh, this recap, what I'm not mentioning is how good Nathan Cleary was, his kicking, his running, picking his moments. As far as general play kicking is concerned, yeah, it was probably a perfect game for him. He chanced his arm in a couple of uh, early kicks that really paid off. He put a lot of pressure on both the young wingers, Philip Sami and Xavier Coates, who the Blues, they didn't, they didn't make it subtle. They were clearly targeting Coates. They sent a lot of traffic his way. Like I said earlier, I thought the game was over after that first try, right after the second half. Queensland lacked energy, lacked uh, aggression, and I think it's just due to all that defense they had to do towards the end of the first half. When it gets gritty like that, you really need to rely on your bench. And unfortunately, the Queensland bench had little to no impact in comparison to the Blues. So in the Battle of the Benches, New South Wales, they come out on top. The Battle of the Forwards, New South Wales come out on top. They dominated the middle. Other players I thought had great games for the Blues. James Tedesco, the captain, leading from the front. And Daniel Tupo doing the hard yards, the dirty work. He got them on the front foot numerous times off his kick returns. So yeah, credit to uh, credit to the New South Wales Blues. It was a fairly dominant performance. They get the dub in game two, 32 points to 10. And that sets up a blockbuster of a decider here in Queensland, Suncorp Stadium. And I can't wait. I'm interested to see who Queensland cut from the side. I reckon changes will be made for sure. Like maybe Kurt Capewell will go back to the bench, Brinko Lee back at centre, and a new winger for Philip Sami. I mean, I don't want to bag players, but in my opinion, his debut was a mediocre and this game tonight was uh just a he just had a rough night is it enough to cop an axe i think so if aj brimson is out for the series i didn't check up on that um i could probably see Corey allen coming into the side valentine holmes going out to the wing we may even see changes from the bench because uh, as i said they weren't effective it was just a weird rotation of the interchange in general you know in terms of effectiveness and punch aggression in the middle it was lacking but yeah that's uh that's pretty much my quick thoughts if you have anything to add to that let me know in the comments section as always if you enjoyed that video and would like to see more rugby league content or more content in general be sure to run it straight at that like button thank you for tuning in and I'll see you, you, you. Later. That's my team. Loyalty of everything. That's my team. That's my team.